or I don't say good day to you. This day, if there's time, how are you all? <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Once again, we thank each and every one of you individually and all of you together collectively for the opportunity to interact this way with all of you. It is a great gift to us. We will begin this transmission with what we have titled the Council of Thirteen and the Crystal Skulls. Now, we know there has been much speculation, much mystery surrounding the idea of these crystal skulls that exist on your planet. And to some degree, that is part of the point. Mystery. They are keyed the genuine skulls, the original skulls, the ancient skulls are keyed to the very idea of opening the doors to mystery, of exploring the unknown. They act, in a sense, as transceivers, translation objects to bring higher frequency energies from other realms down into your realm and are translated through those that interact with them through the filters of your belief systems in certain ways, but generally speaking, put you in touch with many mysteries that lie in the unknown, in other dimensions, other realities, other civilizations, even other levels of your own consciousness. Hello, Bashar. And a you good day. Thank you. When I use crystal skulls, and particularly the ones I'm using in meditation, I merge my physical ears, eyes, nose with that of the skull energetically. Yes. And when I feel a merge, then I can work with the skull as if I were working with my own yes. psychobiological processes. Yes, that's why we said it can reflect your own personality structure so that you can work with it in that way. That's why it acts as a blank simulacrum to take on the form of whoever is working with it. So you can begin to literally identify with it. It is the skeleton key permission slip for all human personalities. That's amazing. Yes, it is. I notice working with other people and myself an observation that when people are gazing into the crystal skulls, there are scenes of nature, of civilizations, of ET activity, all kinds of things. Is it a. Um, it's holographic. It's Whatever mm -hmm. the watcher needs to see is what the watcher sees. So if I'm looking for perhaps a timeline that I can access that is the most positive timeline given my point of reference of being now, yes. I can use the skull. You can as this, a permission slip for that, yes, this, if you wish. And, and then how can I further use that to access that timeline to bring it closer to myself? You know the answer to that because it's the formula we give you all. You follow your passion to the best you can with no insistence or assumption as to what the outcome is supposed to look like. That's the formula. That's why we give it to you. It is also the master key. That's the breakdown translation of the energy that you're talking about experiencing with the skull as a holistic experience. We break it down into actions for you since actions are the language of physical reality. One is a translation of the other. Yes. Make sense? Makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Does that help you? Yes. Anything else? I notice in my life process, whenever I am a critical point in moving through into a f new phase of a project, yes. um, the skulls seem to, to know this. And I it's not that the skulls, quote unquote, know it. Mm -hmm. It's that you are linking with them in a way that you allow them to reflect to you that particular shifting moment more clearly. There is a sense that, th that they're more than just a, a reflection, an amplifying device for that, but that there's some sentience there. It doesn't mean that there isn't. Mm -hmm. Just because something is sentient in its own cognizance, in its own right, in its own self-awareness, 
doesn't mean it's the same kind of experience that you experience when you talk about your consciousness. One of the aspects of its sentiency is to be a reflector. So it's a very powerful one, but that's part of its sentience. When we say it doesn't mean that they know it, we mean they don't know it in the way that you think of things. Mm -hmm. It's innate within their matrix. It's innate within their structure, within their very existence, that they reflect these things as part of their self-awareness. In other words, they become you, you become them. In their experience, there's no difference at that point. In those moments, there is a total vibrational harmonic blending. So it's not that they have to know it in the way you know things. They just have to be it in that moment because that's what they are. They are reflectors. And in that way, they're innately co-creative with us. Yes. That is an aspect of their sentiency that's very different than human sentiency. Well, I'm very personally excited about the possibilities here. Thank you so much. Thank you.